problem. Hopkins, were you talk crazy? Uh, um, no. I don't got nothing. No, there's like nothing crazy to talk about. Welcome to the Practical Pistol Show. My name's Ben, here to answer your shooting questions. We got our Mexican, Alex. <laughs> Not so Mexican. God yeah. damn, dude. What? <laughs> right. I thought I was going so to do that. <laughs> is, is that mean? No, I mean, I'm just French Canadian. That's basically you, you made that shit up. That's no. basically <laughs> not at all Mexican. No, yeah, it's like I'm, there's basically two countries in the world. There's the U.S. and then every everything outside the U.S. is Mexico. Yeah, and Trump calling himself the Snow Mexicans. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> I think I live further north than you do, though, don't I? No, it's close. Not pretty. No. Uh, Did you guys, you guys have snow on the ground yet? Uh, not yet. What do you do? What's the outside temperature? I don't. It's like eight degrees, six degrees. Say it in Celsius. I don't know Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's like forty-one. Like, yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. What is it like? Maybe not. It is currently one degree Celsius here, and snowing. It's not normal at my place. And it's a little, it's a little colder than what you'd expect this time of year for me. It snowed here yesterday. It snowed. Yeah. In KC? Yeah. God oh. damn. It was a dusting, but it snowed. Yeah. Okay, well, so based on our sample size, Hopkins lives in the coldest place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. How about Washington? It doesn't got to go. It just rains there. 28 low tomorrow. Fuck, that's cold. Yeah. Yeah, that's Fuck so that cold. Shit. I would just consider moving, Kim. To someplace warmer. <laughs> that's what I but do. I just move to someplace warmer. 42 high. No, I don't do that. 40, 42 and 28 low. Hmm. All right. No. I forget where, we're, where we were even at in the introduction. I got uh, distracted. You were All telling right. me to be racist, I think. Yeah. I've never told you to be racist. I feel like I don't have to tell you that. You just kind of figure it out on your own. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's very racist? Asian Gaston. people. Gaston, yes. Gaston is very racist. <laughs> but Asian people are racist just kind of naturally. Right, I'm Kim? Korean, so I'm fine. But uh, Japanese people are the racist ones, right? <laughs> That's true. I'm just saying. Isn't that very true as a culture? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the questions. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. I'm primarily a three-gun shooter, but starting to shoot more USPSA to help improve my pistol shooting. I shoot a 9mm 2011 and three-gun, which kind of sucks to shoot in USPSA. Yeah, that's kind of an understatement, dude. I've thought about buying a Glock 34 and shooting production at USPSA matches as I am a competitive person and want to be competitive. I don't have any desire to shoot 40 cal. Neither do I, dude. That shit is not, I'm not man enough for that. Okay. Should I stick with the 2011 and just deal with not being competitive or make the swap to production and shoot a different platform? I'm currently unclassified in USPSA, but I would guesstimate I'm somewhere around A class. Thanks, Ben. Keep up the good work. What do you, th uh, to me, a Glock 34 makes a lot of sense because you get a, you know, get a big ass base pad on that magazine. Get a bunch of rounds in there, like that's fine for three gun, right? But yeah, what would do for production? Just shoot. He could just shoot the same Glock thirty four, just with different Regular magazines. Regular mags, yeah. And oh, practice Lord. reloads and shit. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. The three gun guys will make fun of him. They'll make fun of him because yeah. he doesn't have a nineteen eleven though. Yeah, exactly. And nine. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I, Alex, I do not tell you how common that is. There's a lot of dudes. Like in regions where three guns really popular, they have these like crazy expensive nine millimeter like SVs. Like they're really nice guns. Yeah. They're crazy soft to shoot, super accurate, but it's like, fuck me, this is just a lot of money for a really dumb sport. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, well, I don't know. Recently I've had a couple of friends who are like tired of shooting production and they're like I'm going limited minor. And I'm just like, you know what? I think it's interesting for me to compete and try to beat the limited guys, but with my production gun, but going like limited shooting minor, 
is just freaking dumb. Oh, like, guys, speaking of this, I've had like <laughs> I I've had this ongoing discussion with Gaston. Um, oh, down in Argentina. Because he shoots limited minor. He's, he's been shooting limited minor. He's like, oh, no, no. I talked about it with Eric. Limited minor is the way to go. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's the shit. I'm thinking like, I was like, Gaston, you idiot. Like, if if Eric was like on, on the uh, limited minor train, he just shot minor at the world shoot. Like, what are you talking about, limited yeah. minor? This shit is so <laughs> he, stupid. I mean, he this, did it. Yeah. this discussion went on with Gaston be- between him and I. I mean, with him sending me, like, really mean WhatsApp messages, hurting my feelings, like, just talking crazy <laughs> to me for a year. <laughs> last week, last week, he's like, sends, he's like, sends me a message. I'm thinking about getting a Glock 35. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Because then he's going to have his 40 caliber Glock to shoot in, in, shoot in standard. And then two days later, sends me a message. Yeah, you are right about that major minor thing. I can shoot this major shit so fast. And I was like, fuck you, Gaston. Like, exactly. That's what I thought. There you go. Yes. And you get to shoot major. Yes. When you shoot major, it's like you're shooting Charlie's left and right. And you're like, ah, who cares? <laughs> fuck it. Is it on? Is it, did I hit the brown part of the target? We're good. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess if the guy is asking, if he wants to shoot a 2011 in 3-gun, he, well, and if 3-gun is his thing, he should just stick to the 2011 and shoot minor, but don't expect to be competitive. Like, it, Dude, I minor's mean, a big disadvantage, it, I think. Yeah, yeah, it can still be, like, he can still beat a lot of guys, but I mean, it's not the same. No, it's but, not the same. It's not his main goal. So his main goal is shooting three gun, and he just wants to get better at pistol. So yeah, I don't know. That's fine. Look, a Glock thirty four, like with a big, uh, with a big magazine, uh, you know, for three. Like you just put in the big bags for three gun. I don't really see a problem with that. Glock thirty four yeah. is a pretty good. With a good trigger, it, it's pretty good. Yeah, it, he's gonna be okay. And like honestly, he'd have at least two of those things. For a 1911 price, and then he takes that thing and like, when he dumps it uh, like in a barrel or, or like dumps it on a table or whatever, like he won't care. He'll be like, yeah, whatever. It won't be a safe queen. No, it will not be a safe queen. What are you? Are you on board with that, Kimmy? Obviously, he didn't uh, hear about Walther. So. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. But... The, Walther, <laughs> yeah. the Walther guns are good. Do you have Do you have the uh, base pad options to get a shitload of rounds? Yeah, that's how I should carry optics. Okay, well, see, Walther's yeah. an option too. How about magazines? <laughs> how much do they cost? Uh oh, I, I pay like twenty something dollars. You can't okay, say no, cost. that's good. High twenties. No. That's eighty bucks or something. What? I don't 80, know. German German guns are so expensive. It's eighty bucks Canadian though, so that's like fifteen bucks in the U.S., dude. Yeah, no, like uh, if you get like just an HK, you want to buy an HK in Canada? Sure, why not? But the magazines are like one twenty Canadians, or maybe a hundred. Dang. So like, like fifteen bucks uh, or twenty okay. bucks. No, okay. Well, we just suck in Canada. That's it. <laughs> that's also true. Well, can't don't you guys have deals where like, like you'll have imp like one like a one man shop be the importer for a co- a company like that and just like fuck you up on prices sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't... It, de- it depends on who the importer is. Probably. I, I'm i not in that business thing. I don't check the prices much about other guns than the ones and I buy. The other guns than the ones that matter, which is Tinfolio. <laughs> I didn't say Look, it. you can shoot any gun you want, but if you're going to be winning your division at a big match, like a really big match, you're going to be shooting a Tinfolio, right? Right now, yes, but I also isn't like that right, season, Matt? So. Yeah, it's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Matt! You're not taking my troll bait, dude. It's fine. <laughs> I I don't know how to answer the question for the guy. Just tell him to get the Glock. Shoot a Glock in both. There you go. That's the that's the easy answer where it's like, why do we'll you have to up and buy a forty gun also and shoot both? He doesn't want to shoot forty. He said it right why? in there. 
Then you got to reload for 40. Yeah, it's a real pain oh, in the ass. You got to pick up brass. It sucks. Yeah, fuck that. That's a lot of work. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it's way too, like, either your choices are either shoot 40 or buy a Glock. What do you choose, Matt? I'd stick with 9mm. So buy a Glock, with a Walther, exactly. With the Walther. 9mm <laughs> Walther, then there you go. Or a Tanfo. Well, no, Tanfo is not appropriate for 3 gun. You sure? Meh. Well, I mean, you could do it, but Glock seems easier. Get those big ass base pads on there, like have a zillion rounds in there. That's pretty tight, right? It's like the budget and smart choice, honestly. It is the smart thing to do, which is why so few people do it. They try to outsmart the smart, obvious thing, right? Don't you think? I think a lot of people overthink it or want the best perceived thing that's out there. Well, no, I've sh I mean, you've shot these, like, three-gun, nine-millimeter, 1911s. Like, those things are so soft, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? Yeah, but does that – does it? It doesn't matter. It's just – it's yeah. like it, it, it's cool. I mean, it's so it, – I mean, to me, I don't, like, I don't get it from a money perspective. Like, I'd want to put the money into, I don't know, a really badass optic for my rifle or something. Or, I don't know. For most three gun matches, I don't really think the pistol part matters all that much. <laughs> Based on what little I know. Anyway, let's move on. Not too long ago, I shot a 45 with a very low trigger pull. It was a Wilson Combat 1911. It seemed like you hardly needed to press the trigger for it to fire. I noticed I was able to get really tight grips with it, which surprised me given I normally shoot 9mm. This got me thinking how much impact does the amount the trigger pull weight save and accuracy, especially for multiple shots. The gun that I shoot is just under six pounds. Based on what I've read, I don't have a tool to measure it. The Wilson Combat CQB online is listed between three and a half and four and a half pounds. My question is, have you modified the trigger in your gun? Any idea how many people in USPSA modify their triggers? Does it depend on division? I would think it would. And more importantly, what impact, if any, does it have on accuracy and or time? Thanks. Well, guys, what, well, how many people in USPSA would you say modify their triggers? Every single one of them. Every no, goddamn not my, one of them. All of them. Not my, Bullshit. It's really, more like who does it? Completely factory. <laughs> completely factory. Okay. So everybody but one person, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least changing springs. Like, yeah, Kim did. Well, no, you modify yours, Kim. No, I didn't touch anything. Uh, yeah, it's you, just dry out, fired out it. you dry fired it for like, you know, I have a separate Mitch gun. God damn it. Really? <laughs> yeah. You didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Okay. Because the, the factory pound, uh, the trigger weight is five pounds and six ounce. So I didn't want to risk anything, right? Because at Ipsic Warshoot, they measure the trigger weight how, and it has to be over five pounds. How close were you, do you think? Uh, so I actually brought my dry fire gun and match gun, both of them, and I got tested on both of them. The match gun didn't have any problem. The dry fire gun, the guy pulled it up with the weight, and then he clicked. And then the second time he lifted it very gently, and then it was like edge of the click, but it didn't click. So the dry fire gun barely passed, but the match gun passed without any problem. So what you're saying is you didn't modify your guns and they still pass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I would say most people like modify the shit out of their guns, which brings us to the sec the second part of the question. How does it? How much does this matter? It's a skill level thing. Is it? Yeah, it is for sure. I have well, uh, quite a few different guns that are all set up the same, except the trigger. So if I, I have training guns that I have like heavier springs in, way heavier trigger, maybe some component of the trigger wears out, like maybe uh, the hammer and sear fit gets fucked up with lots of use, and I'm lazy, so I just put in a new hammer and don't fit it, and the trigger is like not very good. Then why are you, <laughs> don't do that, Matt? What do you? What is that face? That's <laughs> nothing. That's fine. No, it's not it's fine. Typical. It's typical. Of Look, if I put in a new hammer, the gun functions, doesn't it? 
Yes. Is the trigger job ruined? Yes. I'm not going to lie. Yes, it's fucked. But You can go full auto and blow up your thumb. No, I'm not. No, it will not go full okay. auto. All right. So I'll have, I have some guns, like some guns where the trigger is like very light and very nice. And people pick that, the people that pick up those guns and they're like, holy shit, this is a great trigger. And I have other guns that people pick those up. You know, it's like laying in a safe area when I'm doing a class or something. People pick up that gun and fuck with it. And they're like, they like don't understand, like, why is this trigger so terrible and heavy? So I've got guns that are of all types. And I'll say, with the, the guns that I have that have heavier triggers, I mean, like, nine pounds double action, five pounds single action type of a thing is kind of the heavier guns. And it's like, I'm a little slower shooting it on the close range stuff. Like, I can't get them splits. Like, the, like I can't shoot it super fast. I can shoot it well, but not super fast. That's it. That's the only difference I notice. I'm not doing any of the 13 splits with uh, really heavy triggers. But at our skill level or your skill level, the triggers don't matter really. But well, if I, there's a C-class guy I just that told has you a stock block trigger yes. compared to a custom done-up one, he's going to obviously shoot better with the custom one. Because yeah, it eliminates some skill level you have to have well, kind or that of you way, would learn. The, the way I look it. at it is it kind of masks the problem where it's yes, like, absolutely. like with a, a guy with a really heavy trigger, you watch him shooting even at like five yards and you can just see, you know, what if, like how, if he's not pulling the trigger straight, you can see it. You see the effect immediately. And there's other guys, and, well, not other guys, it'd be the same guy with a lighter trigger. Then you have to get him back to like 15 yards to see the same to see the same issue just because he's not pulling the trigger quite straight, but it's so light that it's, you know, it's kind of hard to see the effect until you back up more. That's kind of what I notice, to be honest. It doesn't, it does not make you a better shooter in, in many ways uh, because it masks the problems. It makes it harder to kind of see what's going on and improve it. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of modifying the shit out of your trigger before you get like proficient. Is everybody, I think everybody's on board with that, right? Yeah, because actually, if you master the fundamentals, whatever the gun you're going to pick up, you're going to be pretty good with it. Yes. So, I mean, the gear helps, but at one point only. But last year, I was shooting double action gun, and when I first got the gun, it was like 10 pounds, maybe over double action, and I couldn't hit 50-yard target because my hand started shaking around the time the hammer falls down, you know? Oh, I can't, I, hit, to... I can't hit 50 yard targets anyway with a double action gun. <laughs> yeah. But then when I brought it down to six pounds, I could, I could hit. I could hit 50 yards. Maybe not alpha, but I can hit it. That's a little bit of extreme uh, example. <laughs> well, for guys who don't shoot a lot of USPSA, if you have any questions how many people modify their triggers, all of them, and if it's a guy like him who says he doesn't, just assume he's lying until he proves different. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's that's a very good stance, yes. Well, 10,000 <laughs> trigger pulls. Just, just assume he's fucking lying. Like, I still don't really believe him. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I like you, Kim, but I got to assume you're lying just because that's the way people oh, are. Uh, Walter is perfect. This new, new perfection. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> it's good. I mean, it's a good gun, right, Matt? Tr trigger job is not necessary. <laughs> no. It's a fine gun. But... The trigger is nice for real. Yeah. You guys. But sure, like ten thousand, like ten thousand trigger pulls in draw fire will make a nice trigger. <laughs> It'll make one that barely passes the gauge. <laughs> yeah, still legit. It's too legit, really. Uh, too legit to quit, as they say. All right. I thoroughly enjoy the podcast. The unfiltered format of shenanigans is entertaining, even if a particular question doesn't impact me personally. Recently, at a level two, there was a suggestion to make. I thought I, I thought this question was kind of odd. There's there's a, a suggestion to make having a classifier mandatory on all level two and above matches. This is proposed as a solution to many sandbaggers that participate in level two in their side division, since a class one in their main division might be difficult. 
If they don't want to risk being bumped, they will need to risk losing the points on that stage. What do you guys think of this idea? Would it have un unintended consequences or because you guys are all GMs, do you not really give a shit about the classifications for shooters? Just as an aside, I'll point out to this guy, um, what I think of the idea and me giving a shit about it are entirely separate. <laughs> I just think they should change the classification system. Wow, you just like rebuild it from the ground up. Because, okay. I, I mean, Go at least on, a sir. couple... Tell us. A couple of classification, uh, classifier stages are impossible to hit 100%, right? Well, maybe Not... impossible for you. <laughs> or right now at this current time. Okay. No, no one has no, done There's it. a couple of them that's straight up. It's like, <laughs> fuck you. Like, uh, I remember I shot one classifier once. I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was partial people eaters. That sounds about right. I mean, yeah. I looked and I was like, I could, uh, my score on it was awesome. I couldn't find anybody who shot a better score on it ever. Still not 100% because 100% is well, getting all alphas. I think I shot it with one Charlie in a match. That's a tough classifier. Never mind. That's just so. Yeah, I'm with you, Kim. Go on. Yeah. Preach on, brother. Yeah. So the classification system has a flaw. Some classifier uh, stages are easier than others, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, and when I shot many major matches this year, uh, some of the matches, some of the level three and national championship, I shot, it counted as a classifier. And I think that's maybe a little better system. But wait, some... wait. I do have a question just for people who are wondering. You are yeah. A-class in carry optics, right? No, he's I was. Master. No, you... I'm an A-class carry optics still right I'm now. Fucking stand back and <laughs> <laughs> I shot three matches in carry optics. That's why. Don't you love that, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like so, our, see, there I, is a flaw. I, the one guy who is actually a sandbagger. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, so I think the match results has to kick in uh, more strongly than before as a classifier. So, uh, like if you finish second in nationals, you if you finish be, second in nationals and carry on, like and, you, and you're still A class, then you, I think, am. you think something ought to be done then. Yeah. And that match, even <laughs> I shot 99% of that match, and it still didn't count as a classifier score. Well, it's because it was suspiciously good. They got to throw it. Yeah. Yeah. It may I not guess. be reflective of your actual ability. Uh huh. Right? It could just be one of those fluke things. It's the most reflective of his actual ability. You shut up with your logic, sir. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the way it works. Yeah. It's, it's not really good. It's not good representation of it's the good, shooter's skill level. It's good for you getting them Walther checks, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're going to shoot, like, limited 10 all year? Or open all year till nationals? Is that your plan? No, I'm Kim? shooting production. Well, but if you bump to GM in production, that'll fuck up your carry optics situation. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm going to be a master in carry optics. Yeah, I'm going to make a GM for both, both ones. Why? Uh, why not? To troll, obviously. Like what you like, you <laughs> finish. No, I'm not interested in trolling. I'm interested in winning the world championship. God damn it! You take everything so seriously, Kim. But I if, like it. it would be really fun if I be world champion as a A class. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really fun. Get on the Ben plan. No, I think it would be hysterical if you win world championship as A class. Shit, you should write Foley a letter and ask him to bump you down to B class. <laughs> Just say, hey, my eyes are getting really bad. They're really bad. No, I'm Asian. I got to stay A. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my eyesight's are getting really bad, actually. That's what I, I know. Like I'm saying, yeah. this is a legitimate excuse. You can write your – I think you – what did you write it to your AD? You can write a letter. Section and coordinator. Can, your section coordinator can, can request it? He starts it. I'll write my section coordinator a letter and ask him to bump me down to B class. I think you should. Yeah, like, my look, doctor I'm getting old about... and fat and stupid now. Like, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, let's address the question that this guy asked. Uh, classifier stage at level two matches. What do you guys think about this? 
I think it's good that as long as they keep the us, number of the stage. Yeah, I figured. That's the <laughs> matches that you never go to. Like, level two is a big deal for us in the U.S., okay? That's your section yeah. match. That's like our provincials. I know. Is it, well, it's not level three, your provincials? Yeah, they are level threes, but we you have guys level don't twos. Do level like, twos. We do level twos, like, monthly. Oh, yeah. But, like, that for us is all level it's one. It's a different system, though. For Ipsy. No, exactly. it's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just no. like... For be to be considered level two, it needs like, uh, like, delegates, uh, ROs, like, and stuff like that, like stats and a bunch of stuff, and they follow the IPSC rules and uh, the target arrays and everything, so they consider it a level two. But it's it's a club match. At least in Canada, that's how they do it. Well, you guys have designated like ROs working the stages. Yeah. Well, that's the same as the level twos are for us. Yeah, okay, yeah. You, we don't sell ROs. Yeah. See, Matt? Anyways. They just take the shit more serious in Canada. I know <laughs> that. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, so what do you think about having a classifier at all, the, all your section matches that you go to, Matt? You probably go to the most of anybody here. Uh, I don't care. It's just another stage, probably. I, I can't say I'd care. I don't know that it's going to cut down on people sandbagging or whatever. Like, like the I dude that sandbags and wins his class in his non-main division once a year is going to take four years to have this fixed. Is that really <laughs> a fix? <laughs> well, after four years, it's a fix, right? Well, it's not a fix at that point. <laughs> so it's there's some no... arbitrary thing. So you're saying like all these assholes like like Kim are just going to like sandbag fly under the radar. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter though. It doesn't Ken's matter. Gonna steal to you. some A class dude's trophy. Yeah. He is gonna steal their trophy. Is that what you're trying to do, Cam? Steal people's A class trophies? No, it's I just wobble. wanna win that world championship. Yeah, you keep saying that. Yeah, you're <laughs> such a bull. A class right? now. <laughs> Maybe it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they will bump me up. Yeah, this this reminds me of when Myers was in A class, which was a few years ago now. Did I did I tell you, Matt? Like, fucking Tim Myers used to always hit me up when he's going to a section match. Like, who's the A class eat at this match? And I'm he like, said dude, that? fuck, constantly. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck, dude, I don't know. Like, what what is A class? A class eat is that even like a term? Like, what are you talking about? Like, that's not Tim, real Tim life. Yourself. Yourself as A class, he he was yourself. yeah. He won every match he went to in A class, <laughs> and then he bumped to GM, and he hasn't gotten shit since. Karma, baby. Does he quit shooting or what? Myers? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he quit being like even trying to be good a while ago. He just has the look of a man who gave up. <laughs> right. That, yeah, that's good, I, Alex. We can dump on Tim because he'll listen to this before he posts it, and he'll be like, that son of a bitch, Ben, talking crazy <laughs> about me. For people who don't know, Myers is Pro Shop Tim. So if you order stuff from BenSegerProShop.com, the guy you deal with is going to be Tim, who is fun. I he's, thought it was you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Yes, I, I'm, Hi, packing, ben. I'm packing Thanks shit up in my basement right now, mailing shit out. Like, no, you don't want it to be me because I'm kind of, if, if you, people would never get anything. I, I'm always you traveling. send orders out once a month. Yeah, maybe. Like once a month, like stuff should, like people get to send an order in. Uh, what is today? November 1, it'd be like, your order will arrive December 15th. Like, fuck you. You will spill some Coca Cola on the dry fire target. Mm. It out. You're gonna send the the pink, uh, pink hangers. <laughs> Did you like that, Tim? Yeah, is it pink or red? Yeah. Well, I for people who don't know what you're talking about, I've, we've finally gotten different colors of boss hangers: red, white, blue, and black. Um, because Tim's position for a long time was, "Hey, listen, Ben, let me tell you what's up. You want any color other than black, you're a fag or a chick." <laughs> Myers said that. Yeah, he talks pretty crazy. Behind closed doors when he doesn't think it's going to be made public and put on a podcast, yeah, he talks real crazy. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun. He's a fun dude to talk to. I like talking to him. I talk to him every day. Anyway, yes. Uh, I don't, God damn it. We keep wandering off this question. This is what happens when we do one of these marathon sessions. 
I, I like as a shooter guy, I don't give a damn if they have a classifier at every level too. I mean, to me, it's just another stage. I'm with you, Hopkins. I, I'm also with you. I don't think it solves any problems. Like if you're if you're that committed to sandbagging, <laughs> shit. Like you'll sandbag it there. <laughs> sandbagging takes commitment. Damn it. <laughs> so, sandbagging is just shoot sandbag, it, bro. Just shoot it. As you shoot an artist, like regular stage, whatever. Well, no, that's like, but this is among among company of, of just like guys who are want to be high level shooters. Think about if you're in more mixed company, Alex. Mm. Guys who guys who want that that A class would, you know what I mean, or B class would. I don't know. I just shoot a stage. I don't. Anyways, yeah, no, you can't you even know, can, you I, can't even wrap your brain around the concept of sandbagging, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't freaking care about classification, honestly. <laughs> but that that's just me. It's just you win or you don't. Yeah, well, when I got into the sport, I'm like, well, what's this classification business all about? And they're like, well, it's like D's, it's like all the way up to like, well, what's the highest one? They're like, gee, I'm like, well, that's the one I want to be. Like, that's that's all the more thought I ever gave it. Like, that's the what's the highest one? That's where I want to be. Let's how do we make that happen? You know? There you go. <laughs> is that is that your approach, Hopkins? Yeah. Yeah. What's the highest one? That's the one I want to be. Yeah. All of I us except that. for Kimmy, you're the only sandbagger here. I'm not no, sandbagging. I'm... Yeah, you are. <laughs> you this fucking classification sandbagging. is. <laughs> Shut <No>. up. <laughs> no, explain to us the psychology of the sandbagger, please, Kim. Uh, it, it feels great until your percentage drops because you shot crappy nationals and <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> all right well none of us give a shit about this do we this is the issue I don't yeah I hop because it's also no problems either you're, you're the smartest guy here once again as oh, usual oh yeah oh it's just the way it is dude don't don't fight it all right well any other no, questions no, no more questions. That was a bang up podcast. Really great job. Listeners, if you have any questions you want the answer to, go to bensegger.com. Send me your questions. Love to answer them for you. Love to have a conversation about it. Even if it's stuff that we don't care about, Hopkins will answer it in like two sentences, right? <laughs> Bam, you come in there and sort it out. That's right. Problem solver. Problem solved. <laughs>